And as you can see, we're in R1. There you go. So, like I said, this is actually running PuTTY, and this is just a, a wrapper, for lack of a better term, over it. So your normal PuTTY options are going to apply. So if we want to ping the loopback zero, we can just go ahead and highlight, and then right click, booyah. Uh, you might have noticed that the color scheme here is probably different than your default PuTTY scheme. That's because I had this the my PuTTY color scheme for my default settings set to this beautiful blue and white. With PuTTY already installed on this box, it's going to um, take on the characteristics. If you just got a default installation of PuTTY, obviously it's going to have the defaults on there. What's cool here is that if you go to Config, if you go down to PuTTY Session, it'll give you another drop down. So I've got the default settings and that's what I'll use by default. That's why they call it default sessions. But you might have some other um, color schemes or session settings set up for that you had set up in PuTTY. I have R1. I think that's just going to change the color slightly. So if I go ahead and apply that, and unfortunately it doesn't do it right away, what you can do is disconnect, or actually you can disconnect, or we can just do a reconnect, which is kind of cool, which is obviously the combination of a disconnect and a connect. And you can see now that the um, color scheme is slightly different. I've got yellow with a different blue in the background. Right? But that's pretty cool that you can use the um, settings that you have in uh, Putty with M remote. Okay, that's all well and good. Let's get to why we're playing with this in the first place. Hit, and we're going to set up another connection. Connection, this will be R2. And while we're at it, we're going to set up a third one. And then we can go into configuration for R2. We're going to leave everything like it is here. Really just want to go down and choose Telnet. And you don't have to do this. I mean, you could put in the port number and just go from here, but I like the fact that it gets rid of some of the uh, extraneous stuff here. And we should be good to go here with this one. And we want our... Okay, <laughs> our connections. Double click, launches it. Uh-oh. No host now, like I told you. You're going to want to put that IP address in there. All right, let's try that again. There we go. So now you can see we have our tab features. If we want to get to R1, we just go here. And if we want to get to R2, we click here. Be careful with this. Um, double clicking will close out your session. So it's it just know that that exists because if you double click on that, oops, where the hell did R2 go? You can see that it stopped. So but you just double click again on this and relaunch it. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and configure R3. Again, Telnet. And you don't have to do these every time. It will, like we saw earlier, maintain your um, connection settings. And there we go. We've got three different routers. So we got R1, R2, and R3. And you see R2 and R3 have got that different color scheme. That's the default. And then R1 has a color scheme that we set on when we specify the R1 color scheme that I already had built. So we could end here. I mean, we've got exactly what we came for. We now have a Windows application, Telnet emulator, that has tabs. Um, let me give you a couple tips and hints here. One thing you'll notice, especially if you're used to um, secure CRT, or Ubuntu does this as well with its terminal, you can usually drag and drop and reorder these. Say that, oh, let's see, I just double clicked. <laughs> That's kind of fucking annoying, but, <laughs> right? You can usually, you know, in those applications, you can drag these so that you could put R1 first if you wanted. Um, in this case, you can't do that, but there is a workaround because, again, remember, there's two separate things going on here. There's the panels and then the tabs. Let's go ahead and close out, and this time the double click will come in handy, R2 and R3. No, I'm wrong. Add connection panel. Okay, so under view, add connection panel, and we'll add two of these, actually. So now we're going to go back to the general panel and let's see, we're going to rename this to R1 and you'll note that in this panel all we have is R1 open and then we're going to rename this one to R2. Can you guess where I'm going with this? Okay, now that we have our panel set up, let's go to connections and we can just go ahead and drag R2 onto panel R2. Go to R3 and do the same thing for R3. So now we have 
tabs within panel. So we've got a different panel for each router in this case. And like I said earlier, this is kind of neat because you could have a location. For instance, this could be Atlanta, this could be San Francisco, this could be New York, and then you could have multiple devices here. This does is this gives you the ability to reorder. So you're not technically reordering the tabs, you're reordering the panels, but say that you want R3 to appear first here. Go ahead and drag it over, and there you go. You've got R3, R1, R2. Uh, one caveat with this is this thing's touchy, and you can remove these. It gives you, you know, the options to place these wherever. But if you remove it now, you've got yourself a new window. If you double click it, it will return back. So don't, don't worry if you get out there and you pull something down and you're like, oh crap, now R1's not connected to my app anymore. Just double click the, uh, I suppose, title bar here, for lack of a better name. And there you go, it's back where it was. And there's so much more to this application. I'm only going over it from a network administration standpoint. Like I said, you could do RDP and a bunch of other stuff here. Um, one cool thing that is different about this that isn't available like in Secure CRT or some other applications that I've used is that you have this screenshot option here. So let's say on R3, show IP in brief. Now let's do a show int s0 slash 0 okay so this happens quite often and you know you're you're working on something and say that you had a ton of errors on this interface so what you could do is you can just copy paste this into a, a text pad um, I'm sorry into notepad text file is what I meant to say or you could um, and this is outside the scope of this video you could have this stuff logged out but if you just want a quick and dirty this is kinda cool you can do a screenshot so if you go ahead and and you'll go to the tab not to the panel go ahead and right click on it and you'll see screenshot and you can see that it captured this here so what you might use this for is uh, if we click here that should minimize if we clear the counters sure and this go ahead and show our interface one more time so now you have you know, you've just cleared the counters and you're like oh crap what errors were on there you know is this uh, carrier transitions interface resets what was it and you go down here to screenshots click on this and you can see okay well obviously there were no errors here but we can see that there was you know about a thousand packets that had gone through here and from here when it's up you can right click and you can copy it or you can save it out if you just click it it'll go back to the screenshot here you can also set up a file to save these to a, a specific folder um, the only weird thing that I ran into is if you have a folder and you click save all it's it, it names it with like um, one two three something you know similar to that that naming convention so then if you add more to this and then save all again it increments the adding so if you had three files in there and then like two days later you came back and saved them it would be like one two three four five it's probably better if you really do want to keep these for troubleshooting or for posterior to just save it from here because from here if you save it you can specify a name so that's a pretty neat feature I don't know how often you'd use that but it's kinda nice to have it there it's something I haven't seen on other terminal emulators so now if I go ahead and close out everything M remote closes and I can jump up here and it starts back up with that component check here but what I wanted to show you is that the connections remain which is kinda nice so we just close this out we <laughs> gave it a, a hard close but uh, our connections obviously they've stopped that's the pauses the uh, disconnect so it, it stores those so you don't have to keep rebuilding this so now we can just hit R1 R2 and R3 now you do lose your panels and uh, so I've really only scratched the surface of uh, M Remote, and I'm looking at using it specifically for simple network administration. So there are a lot of other features in here, and um, I know that it does have folders and a hierarchical structure that you can set up. That's beyond what I'm using it for, but just know that it's there, and um, definitely play around with it. See uh, what's in there and how it can uh, better help you with your uh, network administration skills. But basically the reason you want to use mRemote is because you're working on a Windows platform and you want to have the um, ability to use tabs. In this case you get a, get a little bonus because you've got tabs as well as um, panels.